Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ron Singh, good to see you on the broadcast today as well as Dharma Bhavana in Dallas. Good to see you, Prabhu. Thank you for being a part of our association and our mission, which is to protect the legacy of our spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. That is one of our main goals. And to help others uh, find the correct method for going back to Godhead by his mercy. So it's a very serious Dharma Bhavana. As you know, it's a very serious mission that we're on. And even though we're fragmented worldwide and uh, in a sense, individual, uh, all of us here are centers of influence like yourself in Dallas, Texas, uh, for people that want a proper understanding of the process of Krishna consciousness, you're there for them as they're to help them as a guide, as a, a siksha. That's what it is. It's, it's a sisha, a, uh, responsibility that the God brothers, all of us, whether you're a new initiate or a old initiate, we all have this responsibility to give the proper understanding of Guru Tattva. This is the essence of spiritual life. And you know, as we're reading the books, Prabhu, you we're seeing it over and over again, the, the theme is constantly being repeated to us in the Bhagavatam, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the Bhagavad Gita, in the verses and the purports, Prabhupada is always talking about bona fide, bona fide spiritual master. And uh, for some people, it's very difficult to understand how Prabhupada still lives, even though he's, uh, Prabhu, even though they say they accept Prabhupada as living, they don't. He lives in sound and his disciples, they live with him. Well, does that mean it's just a dream that he lives in sound or is it reality? This is a bhakti yoga process based on Shravanam Kirtanam. That's how when you join the movement and I join the movement, Back in the 70s, that's how we understood the philosophy then, right? We didn't understand it any other way. Did we change? No. Have we gone up and down in our journey of spiritual practice? Well, yes, everybody goes up and down. But nowadays, the ship is sailing. And we're all on board together, and it's a great how can I say, opportunity for all of us. And I see Shama Sundar's here with us, the uh, Samosa King in Australia. And uh, I really want you, Prabhu, to join us, Shama Sundar, in our media team group, which is meets every Thursday. And I think it might fit in with your schedule because it's at Thursday evenings. And that's also a big part of what we're doing, Prabhu, is just so you know, we have a, a group of devotees that meet every week to discuss all the different aspects of the work and service that we've, we're developing. And uh, it's, it's quite a, as a Yashoda Nandana Prabhu uh, was mentioning at the meeting on Thursday, uh, how much he really enjoys the content of that group when we get together. It's so, it's, 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 it's a, you're taking 
devotional the devotional service we're doing and you're expanding it in this group and we're discussing as a group how we can improve our efforts to serve our spiritual master as a team so this teamwork system that we have is based on the principle of cooperation this is Prabhupada's direction to us cooperate together work together not talk not try to promote yourself as some kind of big authority that you're smart or this and that we work as a team and we're developing as a team and it's it's extraordinary how krishna is working with us and when you connect the dots in your life like Ashoda and my, myself when we started working together a few years back three or four years ago there's been a series of events that have taken place and it's it's showing us that krishna and prabhupada are working with us you just have to look at your life and see it how it's unfolding so act in such a way that krishna will see you that's our business don't look at this like you want to be seen but look at it like this that you want to act in such a way that krishna will want to see you and krishna will step forward and help us and he is trust us on that he is helping us and things are moving ahead in a very positive method manner just like Prabhupada's life in the early years he never gave up his act his desire to please his spiritual master it was his foremost in his mind and uh, <clears throat> we're reading from the diaries of Srila Prabhupada every week here at the Prabhupada Disciples Association and on, I think uh, this, yeah that side this is a long conversation so I'll get right into reading it let's let's see what Prabhupada had to say and how we can draw our own inspiration from these words so it's an excerpt from a morning walk conversation with his divine grace in new york on july 12 1976. Hmm, 1976. i think this was just after he was in toronto you showed a prabhu you showed anandana prabhu tamal krishna this is 72nd street prabhupada yes i know prabhupada says Tamal, <clears throat> you were going to show us that building, Prabhupada. Yes, just at the on the corner of Amsterdam and 72nd. Tamal Krishna. That means next street. Romeshwar. Hmm. They say when you go to the spiritual key, kingdom, you keep the, your same wife and your same children. Is that is that their idea of marriage? <laughs> Prabhupada looks. He see his response. Prabhupada, this is Amsterdam. He doesn't even answer the question. Tamal Krishna, no Columbus Avenue. Next is Amsterdam. Devotee one. You walked here, Srila Prabhupada. Rameshwar, right here is number one hundred. Prabhupada, here is devotee. There is 100. Tamal Krishna. That's the building, Prabhupada. Prabhupada, yes. Devotee. It says Watergate, Watergate Hotel. Tamal Krishna. Which floor did you live on? Prabhupada. And I was trying to purchase one house here. Tamal Krishna. Which floor did you live on, Prabhupada? Prabhupada, I think third floor, and there was an electrician. He was my friend, one Jewish gentleman devotee you would walk on the street Prabhupada yes there is one building with a temperature temperature a gauge here it is this is Broadway I was taking bath here in a station <laughs> taking bath in a station somewhere sometimes I was taking the station I think this building is new I'm going to Dr. Mishra's apartment for cooking being from India, you we can all, I'm having visited India, you can understand how 
Prabhupada was able to deal with this problem of uh, personal cleanliness without any difficulty. Tamal Krishna, what street did he live on? Prabhupada, he, 78th, the Riverside Corner. Yes, I was purchasing my goods from this store, Devotee, West End Superette. Prabhupada, they were charging a little 20, a little chili powder, 25 cents in India, and maybe one Anna. So it's like a penny. Devotee, West End Superette. Okay, Tamal Krishna, you were purchasing here. Yes, because I was going to cook, Prabhupada says, my food there. So whatever I needed, I used to. Tamal Krishna, how come you didn't cook your food where you were living? Huh? There was no place. Tamal Krishna, what was it like there? Oh, this was in the office building of, of uh, by the studio there of Mishra. It was an office room. The building is meant for an office, not for residents. Mm. Tamal Krishna, you rented a room there? Yes, I was paying $72 a month. Tamal Krishna, and where did you sleep? Was there a bed? No, there was, there was bed. There is toilet and water, but no bath and no cooking. Prabhupada, or devotee, did you have... Did you have to go there to bathe also? Prabhupada, yes, I was taking bath there. Tamal Krishna, where did you, did you sleep on the floor? Prabhupada, yes, I had little platforms, so on that platform. Tamal Krishna, you are the most bold person in the whole world, Prabhupada. Devotee, well, we will never be able to do what you have done. Prabhupada, alone I was doing that. And then gradually one or two boys began to come. Tamal Krishna, did any of them come up here who are still with you now? No, Prabhupada says. Tamal Krishna, only when you went downtown did the permanent men come? No one was visiting you up here. Hayagriva? No. Prabhupada says they came there on 2nd Avenue. Hari Sori Mukunda, he's asking Prabhupada, all of them. Prabhupada answers, Rupanuga, that's amazing. How long were you there, Srila Prabhupada? Prabhupada, here about six months. Then when my things were stolen, then one boy was coming. His name was Paul Murray. He invited me that you come to live at my loft. He took me to the Bowery Street, devotee. I met that boy in Amherst. He was has a boutique. He sells clothes, clothing. Tamal Krishna, you must have felt very bad when your things were stolen. Prabhupada, yes, I felt a little disappointed, but some friends, they offered me, never mind, you take my typewriter, somebody, you take my, <clears throat> you take my tape recorder. Never mind, he goes. Tamal Krishna, oh, these things, very easy here. Hari Sori, not easy. Radhabalava, Krishna always provides facilities. So people are preaching to Prabhupada while he's, he's there. <laughs> They're telling him, oh yes. <laughs> Prabhupada, there was no difficulty I got from other friends. Tamal Krishna, so when you moved down to the loft, Prabhupada, the boy I gave him, Hari Das, who was in San Francisco, Tamal Krishna, yes. So Prabhupada says, so this Paul Murray, Haridas, left New York. He went to San Francisco. His name was something else. What is this? Tamal Krishna. So he's asking now while they're on the walk. It's a steel factory. This is near the Rathiatra carts. Prabhupada, oh, steel factory. But very good house. Tamal Krishna, yes. Hari Sori. Paul Murray. He was the boy that went crazy. Prabhupada, yes, he was LSD man. Tamal Krishna, LSD man. He learned, he tried to attack you. Back then, LSD was quite popular amongst young people. Prabhupada, 
not attack, but he showed some ferocious mood, I thought. Devotee, very dangerous, Tamal Krishna, so you thought to leave right away. Prabhupada, yes, immediately. Tamal Krishna, you took all your things and went away? Prabhupada, yes, I kept with Mukunda, Tamal Krishna, and that boy was keeping meat in his refrigerator? Prabhupada, no, this is another boy, Jurgen, Tamal Krishna, John Jurgen. Prabhupada, he's black. So Tamal Krishna says, you were staying with him? Prabhupada, yes. Tamal Krishna, wow, your god brothers could never believe this. And they're laughing. Devotees, so at that time you did not think that anyone would accept your philosophy. Prabhupada, that I was certain. At the beginning I was. Romeshwar, Prabhupada was certain that they would, that they would accept all glories to Srila Prabhupada. So a very interesting conversation here in the back of the book, recalling uh, Prabhupada's situation in New York back in 1966. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Now we'll move forward with the chanting of Jaya Radha Madhava, the bhajan led by Srila Prabhupada, and then wonderful Bhagavad Gita as it is class from the original unedited books. With his grace, you showed it unto Prabhu, our dear God brother. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunna Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunna Bihari Jaswodhananana Vrajajana Ranjana Jaswodhananana Vrajajana Ranjana Jamona Thira Bana Chari Jamuna Thira Bana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya Bihari Gopi Jana Vallava Diri Varadhari Gopi Jana Vallava Diri Varadhari
जाय Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narodamam Naram Cheva Narodamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Mudirayat Tato Jayam Mudirayat one should utter the means of conquest, Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita, after offering respectful obeisances, one, to the personality of Godhead Narayana, two, to the Nara Narayana Rishi, who is the supermost human being, three, to the Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, then four, to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. So welcome everyone to this reading and discussion on Srimad Bhagavad Gita. As before any of our readings and discussion, we read a few of the Sanskrit verses that were given by Srila Prabhupada in the introduction of his Bhagavad Gita on page one. O Magyana Timirandhasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yen Tasme Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yenabhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Anvitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Shcha E Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostuti Tapta Kanchana Gurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda 
ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೇತಗಧಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರ್ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೀ ಹರಿ we will be reading from the original non edited non adulterated macmillan 1972 edition today we will be reading and discussing from chapter 9 text number 29 and 30 all synonyms translations and purports by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupad founder acharya of the international society for krishna consciousness also known as the krishna consciousness movement text 29 samoham sarva bhuteshu namedvesho asti na priya ye bhajanti tu mam bhaktya mayite te shuchapyam samaha equally disposed aham i sarva bhuteshu to all living entities na no one me mine dveshyaha hateful asti is na nor priyaha dear ye those bhajanti render transcendental service to yet mom unto me bhaktiya in devotion mayi unto me te such persons te shu in them cha also api certainly aham i translation by shrila prabhupad I envy no one nor am I partial to anyone I'm equal to all but whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend is in me and I'm also a friend to him purport by Shrila Prabhupada one may question here that if Krishna is equal to everyone and no one is his special friend then why does he take a special interest in the devotees who are always engaged in his transcendental service but this is not discrimination it is natural any man in this material world may be very charitably disposed yet he has a special interest in his own children the lord claims that every living entity in whatever form is his son and as such he provides everyone with a generous supply of the necessities of life he is just like a cloud which pours rain all over regardless whether it falls on rock or land or water but for his devotees he gives specific attention such devotees are mentioned here they are always in krishna consciousness and therefore they are always transcendently situated in krishna the very phrase krishna consciousness suggests that those who are in such consciousness are living transcendentalists situated in him the lord says here distinctly mayite in me naturally as a result the lord is also in them this is reciprocal this also explains the words asti na priya ha ye bhajanti whoever surrenders unto me proportionately i take care of him this transcendental reciprocation exists because the lord both the lord and the devotee are conscious when a diamond is set in a golden ring it looks very nice the gold is glorified and at the same time the diamond is glorified the lord and the living entity eternally glitter but when a living entity becomes inclined to the service of the supreme lord 
He looks like gold. The Lord is a diamond. And so this combination is very nice. Living entities in a pure state are called devotees. The Supreme Lord becomes the devotee of his devotees. If a reciprocal relationship is not present between the devotee and the Lord, then there is no personalist philosophy. In the impersonal philosophy, there is no reciprocation between the supreme and the living entity. But in the personalist philosophy, there is. The example is often given that the Lord is like a desire tree, and whatever one wants from this desire tree, the Lord supplies. But here the explanation is more complete. The Lord is here stated to be partial to the devotees. This is the manifestation of the Lord's special mercy to the devotees. The Lord's reciprocation should not be considered to be under the law of karma. It belongs to the transcendental situation in which the Lord and his devotees function. Devotional service of the Lord is not an activity of this material world. It is part of the spiritual world where eternity, bliss, and knowledge predominate. Next text 30. Apichet sudura charo bhajati mamananya bhak Sadhuriva samanta vyaha samyag vyabasitu hisaha api in spite of chet aldo sudura charaha one committing the most abominable actions bhajati engage in devotional service mam unto me ananyabak without deviation sadhu saint eva certainly sahi mantavyaha to be considered samyak completely vyabasitaha situated he certainly sahi translation by Srila Prabhupada even if one commits the most abom abominable actions if he's engaged in devotional service he is to be considered saintly because he's properly situated. Purport. The word sudracharo used in this verse is very significant, and we should understand it properly. When a living entity is conditioned, he has two kinds of activities. One is conditional, and the other is constitutional. As for protecting the body, or abiding by the rules of society and state, certainly there are different activities, even for the devotees, in connection with the conditional life. And such activities are called conditional. Besides these, the living entity who is fully conscious of his spiritual nature and is engaged in Krishna consciousness or the devotional service of the Lord as activities which are called transcendental. Such activities are performed in his constitutional position, and they are technically called devotional service. Now, in the conditioned state, sometime devotional service and the conditional service in relation to the body will parallel one another. But then again, sometimes these activities become opposed to one another. As far as possible, a devotee is very cautious so that he does not do anything with that could disrupt his wholesome condition. He knows that perfection in his activities depends on his progressive realization of Krishna consciousness. Sometimes, however, it may be seen that a person in Krishna consciousness commits some act which may be taken as most abominable socially or politically. But such a temporary fall down does not disqualify him in the heartedly in hold on, I lost the track. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, 
it is stated that if a person falls down, but is wholeheartedly engaged in the transcendental service of the Supreme Lord, the Lord being situated within his heart beautifies him and excuses him from that abomination. The material contamination is so strong that even a yogi fully engaged in the service of the Lord sometimes becomes ensnared. But Krishna consciousness is so strong that such an occasional fall down is at once rectified. Therefore, the process of devotional service is always a success. No one should deride a devotee for some accidental fall down from the ideal path. For as is explained in the next verse, such occasional fall downs will be stopped in due course as soon as a devotee is completely situated in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, a person who is situated in Krishna consciousness and is engaged with determination in the process of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, should be considered to be in the transcendental position, even if by chance or accident he is found to have fallen. The words Sadur Eva, he is saintly, are very emphatic. They are a warning to the non-devotees that because of an accidental fall down, a devotee should not be derided. He should still be considered saintly even if he has fallen down accidentally. And the word Mantavyaha is still more emphatic. If one does not follow this rule and derides a devotee for his accidental fall down, then he is disobeying the order of the Supreme Lord. The only qualification of, devo de of a devotee is to be unflinchingly and exclusively engaged in devotional service. The mark of a spot which may be seen on the moon does not become an impediment to the moonlight. Similarly, the accidental fall down of a devotee from the path of a saintly character does not make him abominable. On the other hand, one should not misunderstand that a devotee is trans in transcendental devotional service can act in all kinds of abominable ways. This verse only refers to an accident due to the strong power of material connections. Devotional service is more or less a declaration of war against this illusory energy. As long as one is not strong enough to fight the illusory energy, there may be accidental fall downs. But when one is strong enough, he is no longer subjected to such fall downs as previously explained. No one should take advantage of this verse and commit nonsense and think that he is still a devotee. If he does not improve in his character by devotional service, then it is to be understood that he is not a high devotee. O Magyana Timirandasya Gnanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guravena Maham. I offer my respectful obeisances. We all, we all offer our respectful obeisances unto our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, who has opened our eyes from the darkness of ignorance with the torchlight of transcendental knowledge. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swamin Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Bhakti Siddhanta Shishyaya, Bhakti Vedanta Namine, Prasannaya Prashantaya, Tasme Sri Gurave Namaham, Bhagavad Vandanam Kadyam, Guru Vandana Purvakam, Kshiram Sarkara Yuktam, Kadati Visheshataham, Adadana strinam danter idam yachi punaha punaha 
श्रीमद्रूपदम भोज धुलिश्याम जन्म जन्मनि श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गधाधर श्री वसदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so both of these verses have very important points that are raised by the supreme personality of god is himself as explained by shula pravapad in the first verse that we read samoham sarvabhuteshu krishna explained that he is not partial to anyone we often hear the atheistic class of men or the agnostics they will vent their anger and say oh if there is a god why does he allow people to suffer why does he allow so many natural calamities why is it that he allows so many wars and pestilence and forest fires and earthquakes and everything else we've often explained prabhupada has also explained that the government does not discriminate generally against its citizens although in kali yuga they often do but generally the government doesn't wish to have its citizens go to the prison house or go to the penitentiary but some class of criminals will always there will always be a class of citizens that will commit illegal activities criminal activities the government doesn't like to spend so much money on prison house but it is there similarly in god's creation in the material world the living entities are rebellious the reason we are here instead of there in the kingdom of god in vaikuntha or goloka vrindavana is because we have rebelled against the authority of krishna against the authority of god therefore this material world is described by krishna in the bhagavad gita dukkalayam ashashvatam it is temporary and a place of suffering last year i had to take a relative to some hospital in sonora california some medical issue when i got in the hallway in the entrance of the hospital there was an elderly woman in a wheelchair and she was frantic screaming oh i don't want to die i don't want to die and the nurse was telling her, ma'am you are not going to die here you will be okay we will provide you care we will provide you some medicine you will be okay but she kept being insane oh i don't want to die what we see in the material world as prabhupad one time explained in one lecture as soon as there's a little problem with the finger or a little problem with your help people run to the doctor they will pay all kinds of money oh please relieve me from this pain so in this material world it is a place of suffering the very nature of having a material body means there is suffering we see in the bhagavad gita how lord krishna the supreme personality of god it describes intelligence as follows janmamritu jaravyadi dukkha dosha anudarshanam that intelligence means to see the great danger of birth death old age and disease that is the intelligence somebody may think oh somebody is building airplanes big skyscraper buildings sputniks and so many things and so many material devices cell phones televisions all these things very intelligent yes that is very nice material intelligence but superior intelligence means to see the great danger of this problem it was one funny lecture which your prophet is describing that in this life you may have constructed a big skyscraper building but if you're not careful in this life you may be a cockroach in the next life in that building 
So one has to utilize this life to understand the great danger of this problem. And how do we come out of this problem? This is described by Krishna. We have to understand the position of Krishna. Prabhupada explained in text number 29 in the last paragraph, the example is often given that the Lord is like a desire tree. And whatever one wants from this desire tree, the Lord supplies. But here the explanation is more complete. The Lord is here stated to be partial to the devotees. This is the manifestation of the Lord's special mercy to the devotees. The Lord's reciprocation should not be considered to be under the law of karma. It belongs to the transcendental situation in which the Lord and his devotees function. Devotional service of the Lord is not an activity of this material world. It is part of the spiritual world where eternity, bliss, and knowledge predominate. Now, when we look at Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, text 11, this verse is also related to what we are reading. Krishna explains, Yeyatamam prapadyanti tamstateva bhajamyaham. Krishna explains, All of them, as they surrender unto me, a reward accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Prita. Also at the end of the Brahma Samhita, Lord Krishna is telling Lord Brahma that by practice of devotional service, one will attain whatever spiritual practice he has achieved. In other words, if one engages in the service of Krishna, and takes up the path of devotional service, he will get a certain result. And for those who neglect devotional service or who are against devotional service and engage in all other kinds of activities like karma, fruitive activities, jnana, philosophical speculation, so-called yoga practice, and so many other materialistic pursuits, there is a different result. There is a conversation Srila Prabhupada had with a member of another religious group where the person was objecting to the law of karma intense migration of the soul. Srila Prabhupada asked the person, so how do you explain the varieties of life and even in human society, the varieties amongst all human beings? just like one time we were in Bangalore, India in 1972. And we approach a very wealthy man. This person was very, very wealthy. When we came to the house, the family came to receive us. And the the gentleman's wife, as a pure 24 karat gold bangers on her arm, probably as much money you will ever have in your lifetime. I mean, they had plenty of money. Jaguar, Rolls Royces, a silver-plated uh, Rolls Royce. I mean, this amazing wealth, right? So we went, we did Kirtan, we had a discussion. And afterwards, he talked to Guru Kripa Swami and myself, and he said, you know, I have a problem. One of my son is a genius. He graduated from Oxford in England. Brilliant. The other one can't read or write. He, he's like, he's like a, a vegetable. Why is that? Why one is super intelligent, the other one is like, it's like, it's like an animal. And Guru Kapaswami explained to him, well, this is due to past karma. Karanam guna sangasya sadasadyuni janmasu. So Srila Prabhupada in that one conversation with that religionist explained that this situation, the varieties of life are due to past activities and karana means cause, gunasanga means association with the modes of material nature, the mode of goodness, the mode of passion, and the mode of ignorance. That is why in Krishna consciousness, most human beings will eat two or three times a day, and some other people will eat more. 
But generally, somebody has to eat to maintain the human body a few times a day. That's why it is so important to know what kind of foods to prepare, how to offer the food properly, how to eat properly, how to eat at proper times. Like we don't eat at one o'clock in the morning. We don't eat at six o'clock in the morning. We eat at specific times. We have a special consciousness of how we prepare the food. We offer it with a special consciousness according to the direction of the Acharya. We just read a few verses ago, Krishna described nicely how to engage in devotional service very simply for anyone anywhere in the world. Krishna explains, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yome Bhaktya Prayachati with love and devotion. We don't offer meat, fish, eggs, onions, garlic, all kinds of nonsense foods. We don't. Because this is not accepted by Lord Krishna. So a person has to eat three times a day. And if we devote our consciousness and prepare the food stuff properly, offer it to the pure devotee according to the recommendation and instructions of Srila Prabhupada, then there will be one result. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, those who eat food stuffs that is not offered, they eat only sin. Now this is very important because if one wants to improve his consciousness, if one wants to progress in life, one has to understand this point. Same thing about sound vibration. We all know that the tongue has two basic functions to taste and to vibrate. Now we've already discussed how to offer the food stuff, but there's also how to engage the tongue in becoming purified. This is given by the Acharyas. Atasa Krishna Namadi Nabhavet Grayam Indriyai. One cannot understand Krishna by the gross, blunt material senses. One has to purify the senses. Well, the question is, well, how do you do that? Then Krishna explains, this is given in the Padma Purana. Sevan mukehi jivado swayam Krishna can be revealed by engaging the tongue in hearing and chanting and tasting foodstuffs about Krishna. A simple method. This is the standard process that Prabhupada gave. It is not complicated. It is not difficult. Prabhupada one time stated, we are a kitchen religion. Just like our good friend Vishukarma Prabhu yesterday sent me a picture of a big pot of prasadam that he had prepared for some some persons who are very friendly to his ashram in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. So regularly, every day, he's cooking dal, rice, vegetable, all kinds of different varieties of prasadam, and he distributes prasadam. Last year, they distributed a couple thousand plates of prasadam, sometimes publicly, sometimes individually. So this prasadam has special potency. It is described in the Hari Bhakti Vilas by Sanatan Goswami and Gopal Bhatta Goswami that this Mahaprasadam of foodstuff offered to Krishna, it is not so easy to appreciate that. It says, Mahaprasada Govinde Nama Brahmani Vaishnave. That this Mahaprasad is not appreciated by those Svalpa Punyavato Rajan Vishvaso Nevajayati. That faith and appreciation for Mahaprasada, the name of Krishna and Brahmanas, will not come for those who are the faithless class of men. The atheistic class of man will not appreciate, but a pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada is so potent, so intelligent that he will devise a program that even those who have no appreciation, no faith for prasadam or the name of Krishna, that he will some way or other induce them to hear the Maha Mantra and give them Maha Prasadam. In Los Angeles in 1970, Karandar Prabhu, the temple president and GBC at the time, 
this, in his brother Keshava Prabhu, they started a program that on Ekadasi, they would cook a special preparation of peanuts and raisins with different spices. And it was very, very successful, very tasty. They would put it in little bags, small plastic bags with the Maha Mantra and the address of the temple. And then we go on Samkirtan. In those days, we would go on Samkirtan in the street sometimes five, six, seven hours a day. We would go Hollywood Boulevard in the evening. Morning, we would go downtown Los Angeles with Vishnu John and the devotees. And they would distribute these little packets on Ekadasi. And so many people would come to the temple like, what is that? That is not just regular peanut. That is special. Because the power of prasadam, it can bring somebody to the lotus feet of Krishna. There's a conversation with Srila Prabhupada one time mentioned, in the beginning, people didn't care so much for the chanting. Prabhupada said, I would cook. He would personally distribute dal and chapatis and rice when he had the temple at 26 Second Avenue. And by this, the power of the pure devotee is like infectious, very, very powerful, the power of Mahaprasad. Very, because those who are atheistic many times, they will not accept. But the pure devotee is so intelligent, direct intelligence given by Krishna. The pure devotee has direct connection with Krishna. He doesn't ever forget Krishna. Yesterday in the car with Venkat Bhatta Prabhu and Bhakta Ran, we took a drive in the forest. There's some forest where we live, pretty deep forest. And we were discussing this issue of prasadam, how Srila Prabhupada introduced so many different preparations and the whole process of Krishna consciousness of chanting Hare Krishna, Kirtan, prasadam, and hearing Bhagavatam. It's a perfect program. Now, this is supposed to be done in association of devotees. But nowadays, with modern technology, you can have Prabhupada's association 24 hours a day. Simply, we have to connect with a pure devotee and keep in contact, constant contact. Every Sunday, we have this Bhagavatam reading, and we read, Nashtaprayeshu Bhavadrishu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. By this process of bhakti and engaging in hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and serving the pure devotee, then one can realize Krishna. Very important verse, very important verse. We'll be reading and discussing that again tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock Pacific time or 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time, USA. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for that wonderful explanation of these particular verses from the Bhagavad Gita as it is. And I wanted to further mention, Yashoda Prabhu, about the importance of Prabhupada's purports in these matters. And it further gives us insight into the principle of Guru Tattva, which is understood by people, especially in India, the significance of the Guru, bona fide Guru, in terms of being able to understand the science of God realization. Because Prabhupada is the pure devotee of Krishna. He has, he is a conduit for all of us to understand this philosophy. It's not arbitrary. Uh, just whatever someone thinks. A lot of times people speak, and we've heard this from a lot of different people. They just shoot from the hip. Oh, I think it's this. I think it's that. They just make up the philosophy. Some of them don't even refer to Shastra. 
They just make it up. And this is the problem with uh, the material world, that people just make up philosophy. They don't refer to the principles of philosophy based on disciplic succession. And so this is the situation of uh, most people. They just make up philosophy. But Prabhupada here in this verse, I thought it was very profound, Prabhu, that he is giving us an insight on, based on this particular verse, which is <clears throat> very interesting. I'll just read it again. It's, let's see, text 30. Even if one commits the most abominable actions, if he's engaged in devotional service, he's to be considered saintly because he's properly situated. Now that may be confusing for us to read that because we're not understanding how we can possibly consider ourselves devotees if we make mistakes. And Prabhupada's saying here in the purport, <clears throat> on page 485, just uh, the last paragraph, the mark of a spot which may be seen on the moon does not become an impediment to the moonlight. Similarly, the accident, accidental fall down of a devotee from the path of a saintly character does not make him abominable. So we're understanding that sometimes we make mistakes. So Prabhupada's saying, don't give up. Keep going. You may stumble on the path, but don't give up the process because of a mistake. One should not misunderstand that a devotee in transcendental service can act in all kinds of abominable ways. This refers only to an accident due to the strong power of material connections. Accidental fall down due to weakness, to upbringing. Devotional service is more or less a declaration of war against the illusory energy. As long as one is not strong enough to fight the illusory energy, there may be accidental fall downs. Never give up. But when one is strong enough, he is no longer, or she is no longer subjected to such fall downs as previously explained. No one should take advantage of this verse. Yeah. More insight. So there's compassion here, but there's direction from the pure devotee, not from us, from him. And commit nonsense and think that he is still a devotee. So intentional fall down or liberty of taking liberty of fall down and thinking like the elephant who goes in the water and then comes back out and puts the dirt all over himself again and then back again into the water. Like the Christians, they go to church, they make the confession, they abs absolve themselves of sins, so-called, and then the very next day after they have communion, they go back and commit the same sins. And then the following week on Saturday or when, it, when you went to confession in the Catholic religion, <laughs> you go confess the same sins. I had impure thoughts. I had this and that. The priest forgives you. You go ahead. You have your communion the next day. And then the following day, you get back to the, the same nonsense. This is Christianity at its finest. So Prabhupada's saying, don't commit nonsense and still think that you're a devotee. So you have to work at it. If, if he does not improve in his character by devotional service, then it is to be understood that he is not a high devotee. So advancement means determination and sense control, despite the difficulties that we have moving forward in devotional service. You showed Anandana Prabhu, if you could further explain. 
I think this is a very important verse because we all know that this verse has been used to try to forward and push an erroneous philosophy of Acharya fall down. If we look in the Bhagavad Gita, in the introduction to Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada gives the list of the great Acharyas in our disciplic succession. But when we look at the list specifically from Lord Chaitanya to Srila Prabhupada, there's never been a case of one of these members of our disciplic succession falling down or exhibiting symptoms of craziness, embezzlement, illicit sexual activities, all kinds of nonsense. It just doesn't happen. But there are many people trying to rationalize or justify a bogus idea of Acharya fall down have misused this verse from Bhagavad Gita to try to promote that Acharya sometimes fall down. As a matter of fact, there is a conversation which Srila Prabhupada had on a morning walk once where one devotee asked Srila Prabhupada heard that the Acharya could be affected by passion or the pure devotee could fall down. Prabhupada said, who is that rascal? Prabhupada immediately chastised the devotee. Who is the rascal is saying that? In other words, that Prabhupada said, these examples that are given in the Shastra, like Lord Brahma running after his daughter or Lord Shiva running after Rohini, these examples in the Shastra are not to be used as an excuse for people to commit crazy nonsense. But these are warnings that in the conditioned state of life, one has to be very careful, very, very careful how you behave. Not that somebody is thinking that the pure devotee or the acharya could be afflicted by passion or be in maya. This is a gross misunderstanding and misrepresentation of that verse. As a matter of fact, when we carefully look at this verse, if you read every line, there's not a single mention that this applies to Acharya. This applies to neophytes who due to conditioning will have a slip or an accidental fall down. But not this bogus idea that has been propagated and misinterpreted that sometimes the pure devotee falls down or the Acharya falls down. This is ridiculous. This this is not what Krishna means by this verse or Srila Prabhupada's mean by this verse. This is a very important point because we can see how some people use their God-given intelligence and misrepresent and misinterpret what Srila Prabhupada says. There was one purport in a, in a lecture by Srila Prabhupada when Prabhupada was talking about the Mayavadis. And he was explaining how there is a verse in the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Smritir Jnanam Apohanam Cha, that I give the knowledge I give the intelligence, and I can also give forgetfulness. Krishna explains like that. The prophet says, Krishna is very kind. If you want to forget him, he will give you the intelligence how to forget him. Prophet says, just like the Mayavadis, they want to forget Krishna. So Krishna is given the intelligence to them that you interpret this verse in that way, you interpret that verse in that way, in this way they get to forget Krishna. So if one wants to take advantage of this philosophy and twist and misinterpret the philosophy for some ulterior purpose or some personal agenda or for some personal agenda or self-aggrandizement, Krishna would also give the intelligence. But the result is not likely to be very good. I'm going to read a few paragraphs from Srila Prabhupada from a lecture in New York on December 19th, 1966. This is New York, USA on December 19th, 1966 on this same verse on page 453. Samoham sarva namit veshu sina priyaha ye bhajanti dumam bhaktiya maye te teshu chapyaham The Lord says that I am neutral. God is neutral. Samoham sarva bhuteshu samata means this point we have discussed, Sama, how God is neutral, Sama. If he's Sama, Sama means neutral. Then how we find different grades of people or different grades of species of life? That is Samata. Now I will give you a crude example. Suppose I'm a shopkeeper. 
have got different varieties of goods. Now, if you pay me less, then I can supply you inferior quality of goods. Another customer is paying me a good amount, then I will supply you superior quality of goods. Now, I supply to some customer inferior quality of goods. To one other customer, I supply superior quality of goods. Is there any partiality? No, that is not partiality. So God gives you results of your action, act, actions. Samoham is impartial. If you do good acts, then you get good result. If you do bad acts, then you get bad result. That is Samoham Sarvabhute Shu. That is the common, common formula. The Lord says Samoham Sarvabhute Shu Namit Veshu Stinap Priyaha. It is not that somebody is suffering because God is envious upon him. No, God is not envious. He is suffering his own activities. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yes, and uh, we're going to continue that. Uh, one of the points that you made, Prabhu, about this uh, business of fall down, uh, because it, it's not an excuse to be used in the Vaishnava circles for people that fall down and shouldn't be admonished for that, especially when one takes the role of a Diksha Guru. This is, the Diksha Guru is on the Uttama Adhikari platform. That's clear to all of us. That means that they're free from material desires and material ambition. And in some groups, they look at this fall down as excusable. Oh, yeah, it doesn't mean much. Or sometimes you'll hear them speak amongst their own compromised associates. Oh, well, if that person fell down, just go pick another guru who's equally incompetent and hopefully they won't fall down. And in some cases, these poor innocent people that join these groups end up with three or four gurus and nobody can see the flaw. There's a principle Prabhupada gives Yashodanandana Prabhu of rice. If you want to test if the rice is cooked, you all you have to do is do one kernel of rice. That's it. You take it out of the pot, you test it, and if it's soft, then you know that the rice is cooked. So in the same way, these principles of pure devotional service, if they're not being demonstrated by one person who is in a so-called position of guruship, a diksha guru, for example, <clears throat> and you showed Anandana Prabhu, you'll find this quite interesting. I, yesterday, Someone sent me a, a, link, a link to a guru in uh, the mission, Prabhupada's mission, chanting Japa. Hmm. I, try, I think I tried to send it to you. I don't know if you got it, but if, if you had a chance to look at it. But I thought it was quite fascinating. Now, if you recall, I can remember back in, in the day, and I know all of us remember that, we used to chant in groups, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. We'd be chanting like that, and we'd be in groups, and we'd be chanting the 16 names and and trying to somehow or other focus the mind and and enthusiastically participate in the japa. Okay. Were we very, no, we were just trying to say the names, 
And the other day we also had um, uh, this, uh, anyway, so we were describing different types of japa, if you recall. And uh, the, our god brothers, where they were saying, like Balram said, well, well, you have dive bomber japa. This is dive bomber japa, everyone. And you fall asleep. I remember I found Haranyagarbha. What was his name? Haranyagarbha. The one that took initiation from Lali Prashad. And, you know, in Mayapur, whatever, Jagadananda. Prabhu, he became. I found him one time on Young Street. He was chanting his Gayatri, Gayatri mantra in a storefront that was closed. And I walked by and he was asleep with himself sitting on the, on the ground with the, the threads wrapped around his thumb. I woke him up. Prabhu, wake up. So this is not the proper way to chant. You don't chant falling asleep or you don't chant your Gayatri mantra falling asleep. One time I caught Drupada, he fell asleep all night in front of the deities. And I woke him up at 3.30 in the morning and he was still sitting there and his thumb was all purple because the blood was shut off. So watch this video of this Prabhu who's a guru in this group that we know. And He's falling asleep on the video. And then he's chanting like this. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Ram Ram. Krishna. Like that. No 16 words. No 16 words. No chanting of the Maha Mantra. Uh, <clears throat> falling asleep while he's chanting and he's being videoed. And I sent it to our friend Garuda who's in California right now. I sent it out to a series of people just to show them. I didn't make a comment. I didn't comment on it. I thought, let's see what people think of this. And he sent me back a message. This is embarrassing. I said, most definitely. This is a great embarrassment. It is an hypocrisy. This is a farce that they're projecting themselves as Uttama Adhikaris and at the same time practicing bo uh, dive bomber japa, not chanting the entire 16 words and presenting people, to, to, presenting to new people, follow my example. This is like the rice in the pot of rice, it's not cooked. And if you think it's any different with anybody else, you're wrong. This is a complete farce. This is something that we should understand. That this verse here from the Bhagavad Gita is not an excuse for people to take advantage of this verse and commit nonsense and still think. Prabhupada says he's still a devotee. It does not improve in his character by devotional service. If he does not improve, then it is understood that he is not a high devotee. Come on, Prabhus. We listen to chat Prabhupada's um, Japa class every day. And hear Prabhupada, the way he chants the Maha Mantra, it's brilliant absolutely brilliant and i recommend that everybody does that every day why was that so-called guru chanting by himself falling asleep why didn't he have Prabhupada's tape on playing along with him chanting his japa and show people how to chant in association with the pure devotee not thinking that he can just show everybody how to chant and in the meantime it's a joke this is a farce. And there was the proof right in front of our eyes. And at least Garuda Prabhu saw it and said, this is ridiculous. And I told him, this is the proof. The whole thing is a sham. Yashoda, if you could further comment. 
Well, there's an interesting statement by Srila Prabhupada. I'm trying to unmute here. There's an interesting statement by Srila Prabhupada in the Nectar of Instruction, mm -hmm. where his divine grace explains that one should not imitate, he's giving a warning that one should not imitate the Mahabhagavata unless one is self-realized. Otherwise, one will eventually become degraded. And the, prob the problem is, if one does not follow Prabhupada's instruction, we have practically historically seen that this happens. In other words, there's a specific path for devotees to take, a specific mode of behavior, specific ways of acting, and if one starts to manufacture his own interpretation, then there will be problems. And we've seen this practically since 1977. We've seen that. And then some people will say, oh, you people, Vishwa and Yasoda, you're just engaging in criticizing. No, no, no. We're not trying to criticize or denigrate or insult anybody. That is not the issue. The issue is that Srila Prabhupada has given certain instructions how we should behave, especially for those who claim to be gurus or teachers or preceptors. And there is a, a mode of behavior that one should have. And one of these restrictions is one should not imitate. You cannot imitate the Mahabhagavata. That will give disastrous results. And we've seen this mm -hmm. of devotees who made good advancement, considerable advancement, Mm -hmm. rendering very nice service to the mission. and But then they got into their head, oh, Prophet did it, we can do it too. Prophet sat on a Vyasasana, okay, let's get our trampolines out, let's jump on a Vyasasana too. Oh, Prabhupada had his own Pranam mantras, oh, let's get our own Pranam mantras too. All kinds of manufactured concoctions born of mental speculation. There is no instruction in the last few months of Srila Prabhupada's manifested presence with us, specifically in Vrindavan. <laughs> you will not find, you can read every conversation, every letter. There is no instruction that Prabhupada gave for any disciple to act as a Diksha Guru or initiating spiritual mass. As a matter of fact, you will not even find that term there. There is no instruction for anyone to set up their own Vyasasanas. There is no instruction from his divine grace <clears throat> for people to set up their own Pranam mantras what to speak of getting their own Pada title. Srila Prabhupada made arrangements to continue his society, that things would continue his absence. He would remain the actual guru, but people would be initiated as his disciples the, by the via media of officiating representative. They did not like that. They wanted to jump. You jumped and look what happened. Look at the history. Some people never learn from history, but we have to be a little smart. We have to develop intelligence. We have to carefully see what not to do, how not to act, how not to behave. Because sometimes devotees ask, well, why did this happen? How did Krishna or Prabhupada allow this to happen? Well, one thing is we can learn from all these incidents how not to behave, how not to, how not to act, how not to imitate the Mahabhagavata, the pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada, and to behave ourselves. We have to be very careful about this because we see this has caused a lot of chaos, mm -hmm. a lot of difficulty, and it's still causing a lot of bewilderment amongst a lot of people. This imitate, there's a, there's a, a, a conversation with Prabhupada says, imitation is always bad, and he repeats it again, imitation is always bad. There's no need to try to imitate. We don't need any anupads. We don't need that. You know, in the Krishna book, there's that story of Pandraka who dressed himself with four arms and trying to challenge Krishna. Well, we don't need imitation Prabhupads. We've seen the results of it. Unfortunately, it's sad to say that some persons never learn from their mistakes. So we can learn from it and be very careful, remain eternal servant at Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet and promote his divine grace as the actual guru, the current guru. Hare Krishna. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we're moving to the end of the program tonight or this morning or wherever you are on the globe. 
And we want to thank you for your participation for sure. And I just wanted to comment further, you showed it in regards to what you were saying and my latest sort of, let's say, meager realizations. Absolute power. There's a saying in the world, absolute corruption. So when a person takes the role of Diksha Guru, technically speaking, according to the Shastra, the disciple worships, worships him as good as God. Hmm. Is that dangerous? Absolute power. Krishna is the absolute supreme Lord. The pure devotee of the spirit of, of the Lord is given uh, worship and service because he is the bona fide representative. And when you misconstrue that, it becomes a disease. Speaking to someone, uh, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, about a particular Prabhu who's doing motivational speaking right now. He doesn't mention Shastra. He doesn't mention Lord Chaitanya. He doesn't mention Maha Mantra. He doesn't mention anything to do with our philosophy. It's called post, post Prabhupada books. Post. It's a, a disease. That disease. Uh, becomes apparent as time unfolds. In other words, the, I was speaking to Garuda about that, our Prabhu, our God brother, and he said he used to be a very nice devotee. Oh, yeah. In fact, the particular Prabhu we're referring to was recognized as one of the top book distributors in the mission. Very hardworking and sincere. But once he accepted this role of absolute authority with discipleship, then the disease of prophet adoration and distinction spread throughout his uh, being. And now it's become manifested in these different, different symptoms. So this is a disease that is infected the society and in this way they're not understanding these beautiful instructions today that we did get from Srila Prabhupada even if one commits the most abominable actions it is if he's engaged in devotional service he's to be considered saintly because he is properly situated so everyone please uh, carry on with your devotional service. We've reached the end of the program today. Thank you very much for participating. And Vinkat Bhatta Prabhu, I believe we have the Vyas Puja offering book that we, that you produce for us uh, coming out soon. Could you maybe give us some insight into that just briefly, how long it will be in the um, process before it's ready? Are you still here? Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be available on our website, you know, krishnaconsciousnessmovement.com soon um, in a couple of days or one or two days, I'll be posting it there. And then okay. uh, in the print version, uh, probably probably uh, one or two more weeks. Can you show yeah. the cover? Are you still capable of doing that from your, your machine there? From your computer? Yeah, I can open it up one second. If you don't mind, I, I just want everyone to see this beautiful uh, offering that we, as a group, have made to Srila Prabhupada. And uh, if you look on the inside cover, uh, the first page, uh, Shoshoda Nandana Haprabhu has compiled all these wonderful, yeah, here we go. All of, look at this, all the articles that are a part of the book and then all the offerings from the different devotees. There's Goramani, uh, Dwaipana, Divyarada, Dear Govinda, Dharma Bhavana, Dananjaya, like that, Nara Shringha, 
all the great devotees that are part of the Prabhupada Disciples Association effort to preserve Prabhupada's legacy moving forward into the future. So this book will be available. I wanted to remind everyone too that tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. we'll be having the amazing Srimad Bhagavatam reading from the original 62 uh, version. And it's a very uh, sublime look at Prabhupada's uh, mentality back in the uh, days before he officially started the ISKCON movement. And if you get a chance, Vinkat Prabhu, could you just read this last quote from uh, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu on the chat for us? Do you mind? Yeah, sure. Yeah. When one has attained the topmost position of Mahabhagavat, he is to be accepted as a guru and worshipped exactly like Hari, the personality of Godhead. Only such a person is eligible to occupy the post of a guru. However, if one is highly qualified but is not a Vaishnava, he cannot be accepted as a guru. That's and there's the link to the page. So for all of you that are on the chat, you can uh, get these. Yes, you showed a Prabhu, sorry. I wanted to point out there is a lot of propaganda by various individuals who claim that uh, the Madhyam or middle class devotee can also be Diksha gurus. And we see, according to that we just read from Srila Prabhupada, he doesn't support that idea. Prophet explains only such a person is eligible to occupy the post of guru. And here's the problem with the idea of Madhyam. There's two kinds of Madhyam devotees. One of them is the Uttamadikari Mahabhagavata who comes down to the Madhyam platform to preach like what Srila Prabhupada did. Another one is a person who comes up to the Madhyam position from the Kanishta or the third class position. That person is not recommended for him to have a Diksha Guru. And here's why. This is from a conversation in Ahmedabad, India on December 13th, 1972. It's a Srimad Bhagavad Gita class. Prabhupada says, the Madhya Madhikari should not touch the demons because maybe he may turn again into a demon. <clears throat> Therefore, one should be very careful to associate, not actually not to associate with the demons. But when one becomes Uttamadikari Mahabhagavata, he does not see anyone as demon. He sees everyone is worshiping Krishna. I'm not worshiping. This is Mahabhagavata. So this false idea that has been propagated that somebody can now claiming that because I'm a Madhya Madhikari, they misinterpret these statements to try to squeeze some interpretation that is really not there. Because when you see this warning by Srila Prabhupada, and you read this text from the Madhya Leela of Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 24, three ter three, text 330, where Srila Prabhupada clearly says, only such a person, okay, the topmost position of Mahabhagavata, only such a person is to be accepted as guru. So this is not just a cheap business that anybody can jump on a trampoline and claiming that he is not on the level of Niko Janyuno and the sum total of all demigods. This is a recipe for disaster. And we've seen this repeatedly. It is best to accept a humble position. And if one is engaged in that service, he should use it as a service not as a position to take advantage of. Thank you. To whom it may concern. Hare Krishna. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And today's conversation, I see Vinkat Bhatta has Nectar of Instruction, uh, verse 5. Maybe you could read that for us as a last uh, comment in today's program. Do you have oh, okay. it? Sure. But, yeah, Please. so, I mean, they actually use uh, people who... Uh, who propound this philosophy of Madhyama Adhikari Diksha Gurus, they use this yes. verse also. But in this verse, in this purport, you know, if you actually read it without the motivation, you can clearly see Prabhupada is saying the opposite. So in this verse, Srila Rupa Goswami advises the devotee to be intelligent enough to distinguish between the Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari, and Uttama Adhikari. The devotee should also know his own position and should not try to imitate a devotee situated on a higher platform. Uh, well, I think. Uh, Oh uh, yeah. 
Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has given some practical hints to the effect that an Uttamadikari Vaishnava can be recognized by his ability to convert many fallen souls to Vaishnavism. One should not become a spiritual master unless he has attained the platform of Uttamadikari. A neophyte Vaishnava or a Vaishnava situated on the intermediate platform can also accept disciples. So they, they just quote this sentence, you know. Yes. But such disciples must be on the same platform and it should be understood that they cannot advance very well toward the ultimate goal of life under his insufficient guidance. Therefore, a disciple should be careful to accept an Uttamadikari as a spiritual master. So they ignore. It's like they, they take the middle of the sandwich. Like Prabhupada has, you know, one should not, you know, Prabhupada has given a warning there. And then uh, this sentence they take, but then they, they ignore the, 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 the beginning and the end. <laughs> so I just wanted to comment that. Perfect. And, you know, Prabhu, thank you, all of you, for joining us. We've been explaining this based on the verses today of Bhagavad Gita, giving us insights so that everybody has a clear understanding of what is what. You have to know that this philosophy is, is logical, it's authoritative, and it's based on Shastra, not on mental concoction. And all these sections are critical for everyone's advancement in Krishna consciousness in the Prabhupada Disciples Association. So Hare Krishna, let's hear the kirtan from uh, the early 60s with Srila Prabhupada chant along. And we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Srimad Bhagavatam as part of your weekly sadhana program. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithyananda Shri Yataita Radhadhar Shri Vashadi Gaurata Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Yataita Vadadha Sri Vashati Gaurabhakta Bhunda Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna 
Vanchakalpa tarubhyascha kripa sindubhya evacha patitanam bhavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna